Hi guys, this video is all about the central Greek factions that they've added into RTR Imperium Serectum version 0.6 and their histories. It's taken from a longer interview video that I did with Mausos, one of the historians on the mod. So make sure you check that video out and like and subscribe while you're at it. Enjoy. Oh, I think we should not forget about Issa. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, we, we'll count Issa as part of Greece, even though it's not. Right. So, yeah, we'll go it's to really. we'll go to Issa first, even though it's not part of Greece. But we're we're, we're uh, kind of I don't know northeastern Mediterranean now, so we've counted as a part of mainland Greece anyway, even though it's not. But we'll start on the sort of uh, the Greek uh, mainland, which is down here, but the the Greek mainland ish uh, of Issa, which is up here. So, uh, yeah, let us know about Issa. Yeah, I mean, um, we are now in the area where Dionysius the uh, first of Syracuse was really active in the first half of the fourth century BC, when Syracuse was the most powerful um, entity in, in in all of Europe potentially, just before Philip the second of Macedon would mm. um, send the throne over there. But Dionysius the first of Syracuse, he reigned from 405 to 367 BC. And not only was he involved with the history of Akragas and Taras, but he was also involved with the history of Ancon, because he founded it, and he also founded Issa. And we've just seen Ancon, modern Icona, which was founded as a Syracusan military base, as a naval base on the western coast of the Andria, mm. Adriatic Sea, while Issa would cover the eastern coast. A victory of cool. the Illyrians here opened these islands, and the modern island of Vish, I think it is, where, again, my Croatian pronunciation is not that, <laughs> not, <laughs> not top-notch, I guess. Um, they established a colony here called Issa, which we can see on the screen right now. And it, it's also um, found as sub-colonies like Salona, modern-day Split, um, also Kokura Melina, the, the Black Corfu, um, on one of the other islands, which are uh, Croatian name, which I cannot recall right now. <laughs> <laughs> but in any case, um, it was all here so the Syracusans could control the Adriatic, because at the time Dionysius controlled most of Sicily and also had defeated the Italian League, which you already mentioned. Uh, we have units for all the Greek cities in southern Italy because they were in the Italian League. That was the name of the Greeks in, in, in southern Italy, Italiotes. Mm -hmm. And um, they get their own units as well. Later, they were allies of the Romans, but in the fourth century, they were defeated by Syracuse. And then the Syracusans also wanted to control the Adriatic and set up Issa and also Ancon. Um, so, all of this is the product of Dionysius. Syracuse doing and then the science afterwards they built up a small maritime empire as you can see here of their own yeah. they controlled the trade between Epirus the Dalmatian hinterland <laughs> and Italy and um, because of the alliance between here Hiero the second of Syracuse um, and the Romans from 264 to the death of Hiero in 215 BC Issa also became a bit of a friend of Rome and the Romans would intervene in the East for the first time in 229, 228 BC to support the Isaians who were besieged by Tuta, the Queen of Illyria. Cool. And then there's different versions about the story, but Tuta somehow had one of the envoys from Rome killed and was one of the Isaian envoys. And then the Romans actually dispatched an army of 20,000 men infantry and 2,000 man cavalry and 200 ships was the first time that the Romans crossed the sea wow. and go to the east. So the Isaians played a big role here and later they were still regarded as an important maritime power and a naval ally of the Romans. So this is why they're in the mod and um, yeah, they also have two special units, I think, the Isaian Hoplites and the yep. Isaian Epibati with the Marines, which um, pay so much to their position as a naval power. Both are rather lightly armed, which has already disappointed some testers. But <laughs> to be fair, um, <laughs> the Illyrians are not recorded as using body armor in this period. So why would these signs need <laughs> yeah. any body armor themselves? They will, of course, still get some heavier units as other yeah. factions do. So a pretty cool, uh, pretty cool little faction, to be fair. Nice, uh, nice position. Uh, interesting history. Mm -hmm. uh, but in terms of the Epibati, then, what does that mean? In general, does that just mean marines uh, in terms of uh, in, in Greek, or is there a more deeper meaning to it? Yeah, it basically means means marines. I think a standard triarium or triarium or whatever 
you want to call it, um, the, the average Greek battleship had, I think, 170 men of sailors, officers, rowers on board and about 12 to 18 soldiers. And these are the Epibatai and they yeah. could fight um, with bows, with slings, with swords, spears, basically everything. Of course, their armor would always be rather light because, you know, if you go overboard, <laughs> you're burying a heavy bronx muscle cuirass, <laughs> then that's not going to happen for you. <laughs> I've got the coolest helmet on board. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. As soon as you fall into the sea. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, and that happens quite often, you can imagine. Like, not just in battle, but also because ships might be damaged. And there yeah. might always be issues where people go overboard. Just like the pirates and Asterix, you got to get used to it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So, really cool little nation. Um, so, we'll move down the coast slightly. Down to here and we are going to talk a little bit about the Akarnanian League as well which is a little league got a couple of settlements in here so what did these guys get up to historically so the Akarnanian League is one of the really minor factions in mainland Greece at first look it plays an important role as you can see right now between the Aetolians and yellow on the, in the east and the Epirotes in green and the north and um, rather unsurprisingly um, the country was divided between the two in the 250s BC mm. so not very long after the start of our campaign even though the Aetolians had signed an alliance in um, <laughs> 263 BC with them which in a claw included a clause saying that it was an alliance forever <laughs> but it only took about five years for the Aetolians to say, oh, no, we'd rather go have these lands ourselves. So oh they just God. went to the next thing. Literally, yeah. literally <laughs> this time period was like, I'm your ally. And then two minutes later, oh, shit, no, something's happened. No, I'm not. I'm your enemy now. I'm your ally over this side. No, I'm their ally. I said they, I was their ally five years ago. I promise. It's just like, yeah, oh, yeah, it's yeah. crazy. <laughs> That's exactly how it is, so people shouldn't complain about the AI AI and its diplomacy, really. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, um, in 230 BC, then, um, the dynasty of Puros and Epirus was actually overthrown, and the Epirate Koinon was installed, a kind of aristocratic republic. And this gave the Akananians the chance to regain the independence in the same year and refound the league. But 12 years later, the Aetolians. Uh, sorry, 18 years later, the Aetolians had the glorious idea to invite the Romans. <laughs> and, of course, the new coalition would overrun the poor Acarnanians. Yeah. In 167 BC, after Mac- Macedon was put to the death, well, the sword, well, <laughs> kind of, at least the kings were, the Romans re-erected um, the Acarnanian League, but it didn't play much of a role afterwards. Mm. It's, it's mainly there because... Um, yeah, it's in a very interesting position. It's in a challenging position, and it produced hoplites and slingers. And especially during the Peloponnesian War, when the Athenians tried to conquer Acarnania, the slingers really acquired much fame as some of the best slingers in all of the Greek world because they defeated the Athenian hoplites. Oh, cool. And um, they also have their own hoplites who fought for Purus in Italy, mm. for Taras. Um, so there's a connection once again with the factions we've already seen. Oh, fantastic. That's really cool as well. So um, let's move on to another emergent faction then, on to the Thessalian League, uh, which is an emergent faction over here in Thessaly. So I don't know exactly which settlement is the uh, the trigger or whether it's multiple settlements, but like we said, we're going to be, so you know, the uh, the emergent factions, we're going to have another video. I, I keep saying it. I, I'm I'm not being a power okay. I'm not repeating myself too much, but yeah, there will be a video on the emergent factions coming up uh, and how they emerge and all that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, they are an emergent faction in here. And if you've seen my Sparta campaign, I have used many, many, many of the unique units, the Thessalian Lancers, um, because the Spartan cavalry is terrible and the Thessalian Lancers are good. So yeah, but they also have access to another unique unit, which is the Per. Perhyben Cavalry? Do you want to pr- <laughs> make my pronunciation a bit better on that? Oh, I have no idea how to pronounce them 
uh, if I'm speaking in English, I mean, I'm struggling <laughs> to pronounce it. If it's in German, I no idea. I mean, it's a strange word, even in Greek. So uh, yeah, it's it's per hyben cav per hyben per hyben cav. See, in English, you want to say per hyben cavalry and just make the H silent, but maybe maybe yeah yeah per, probably not per hyben yeah you know. per hyben or something like that per hyben cavalry. There we are. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, they also had a very specific accent, the Thessalian, so who knows? Oh, okay. <laughs> In any case, um, yeah, the Thessalian League, it fell under Macedonian control, as we can see here. And they had a so-called Tagos as the hat of the League, which is basically at least Strategos, which is from a more familiar word for most who um, listen to this video. And the Tagos was responsible for the military leadership and the organization of the League. Mm. And it was basically ruled in personal union, just like Poland and Lithuania in the early modern period, for instance. Oh, cool. um, or at times Saxony in Poland, mm. or uh, Hanover in the UK, of yep. course, um, under the Hanoverian dynasty in the 18th century, early 19th. It's the same here. The Macedonian king becomes the Tagros of the Thessalian League. Yeah. But of course, the Thessalians um, used to be a um, quite important independent power, even though they had different tyrants fighting against each other in the 4th century which uh, was how they fell under the Macedonian yoke in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, they have a problem. They have a big problem here. If you see the bay on the right, which is Demetrius, um, founded there by Demetrius Polyoketis, the father of Antigonus Gonatas, the king of Macedon in 270 mm. BC. And um, Demetrius was called one of the fetters of Greece, together with Chalkis on Euboea and Corinth because it was an unassailable fortress town controlling both the access to the sea and the land routes into the interior of Thessaly. Yeah. And um, the Thessalians revolted a few times, but um, they could never really take Demetrius. And I don't think the Romans were able to starve it out or defeated the Macedonians elsewhere. Yeah. So that's a bit of an issue for the Thessalians. But, um, um, and this also undermined Pyrrhus' plan to re-establish the Thessalian League because he wanted to do this. Um, but after the Second Roman-Macedonian War, it was reinstated. And then they, they kept complaining in Rome about the Macedonians trying to reenact them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but well, that, that's what happens. Um, yeah, in 27 BC, that's kind of the end of the story. The Tagos um, office had been replaced by Strategos, like other Greek states. And in 27 BC, the, um, the Thessalians elected Augustus, the first Roman emperor, as their Strategos. So even in Roman times, there was a bit of a personal union with Sicilians and um, a foreign power. But of course, in our campaign, the Thessalians have the chance to shape their own history once again. Yeah, of course. And uh, yeah, hopefully they'll emerge and, uh, and be a thorn in the side of the Antigonids if you're playing any of the other smaller uh, smaller nations. But uh, I think that's mainland Greece yeah. done. I think, we've, I think we've made it. I think we've got to the end. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for that, Mausoff. That was honestly so interesting. Uh, really in-depth on all those factions. And I think everyone can really appreciate the amount of historical knowledge and reasoning that's gone into all these factions and everything that's in the mod as well. Yeah, thank you for having me. And thank you guys for watching. And guys and girls, I should say, and everyone... Um, we hope you enjoyed the video, and there will be more RAS content in the coming weeks on Red Z's channel. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I can tell you that. And uh, we are building towards the, the next release, of course, of RIS 0.6. And as you can see, um, we've made great progress with the factions, the units, and the map, which is at this moment being completely finished. So. Um, there's going to be so much new stuff you won't believe it <laughs> yeah it's gonna be it's gonna be awesome so stay tuned guys make sure you do subscribe make sure you do like this video if you've appreciated it uh, appreciated it because there might be another couple of videos coming with miles loss uh, in the future as well so uh keep that in mind um and make sure you check out the greek aor units and the uh, and the map showcase if you've not seen the map showcase as well and stay tuned because as i've said already Every weekend, guys, is going to be an in-depth uh, development update on version 0.6 all the way to release. So every weekend, you're going to be full of RAS content just like this. So thank you very much for watching, guys. Thanks once again to the mod team, especially um, Mausolos. So thank you very much uh, for watching, guys. And I will see you all again on the next video.
Bye-bye.